Hello there, I'm Dave Litton and a warm welcome to my two-part video series called Critical Chain Demystified. This, as you can see, is part one and if you go over to my website, you'll be able to get part two and the free handbook that accompanies this two-part series. My purpose here is simple and that is to demystify the planning, monitoring and control of your project using Critical Chain Project Management. And right now, you may be thinking to yourself that using Critical Path Project Management, along with the associated project management techniques, suits you just fine. On the other hand, you may be scratching your head and thinking about Critical Chain Project Management and wondering what's in it for you. Well, maybe you're holding back because you don't quite understand it. It's highly likely you've heard about Critical Chain, even though it's only been around for the last few years. But it may be that you don't yet understand enough about it to make an informed choice. You may be unsure about what the benefits are of using Critical Chain project management as well as Critical Path project management. And yes, I do recommend you'll need both of them. And it might be that you're not sure how to go ahead and implement it in your current and future projects as well, of course, implementing it across your organisation. Don't worry, I'll answer all of those questions in this two-part video series. Now, part one, that's the video you're watching right now, will be covering critical chain origins, looking at the difference between critical path and critical chain, some of the traditional problems that critical path has, as well as some advantages of harnessing and using critical chain. I'll take you through the critical chain method, I'll explain how you perform critical chain estimating, as well as scheduling the tasks as late as possible. I'll go into detail about the critical chain buffers, use of PERT estimates, and project level PERT. If you're not sure what PERT stands for, don't worry, I'll explain all of that as we go. Then in part two of this video series, I'll be sharing with you some of the approaches you can choose to deciding on the size of the buffers. There's a technique called cut and paste, adaptive with density, there's the root squared error method and the root squared error method using PERT and finally there's estimating buffer size based upon resource tightness. Don't worry I'll explain exactly what that means and then I'll go on to share with you the approaches you can use to resolving resource conflicts. The final four might be of particular interest to you the first, I'm going to share with you some ideas about buffer use when using a methodology such as PRINCE2. Then I'll cover the use of critical chain with agile project management. Then we'll go into critical chain monitoring and control, how you can use it in practice to manage your projects. And the use of critical chain with the planning tool, Microsoft Project. And my objective here, once you've watched both part one and part two of these videos, is that you will want to use both, that is, critical path project management and critical chain project management. Indeed, when you see the advantages of applying critical chain to your traditional project management techniques, you'll wonder why you didn't adopt it sooner. So, that said, pull up a chair, pour yourself a strong coffee, and let's get stuck in. First of all, the individual concerned who created the critical chain method is Dr. Elihu Goldratt. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. And he brought the world's attention to the critical chain method by writing, unusually, a business novel about it. And since then, many other individuals have built upon that and expanded some of his ideas to form the latest understanding of the critical chain project management method. And the purpose of these two videos is to take you through, step by step, in a structured manner, an overview of the techniques and approaches necessary. Now, the critical chain method originated from manufacturing, where the rate of production is set by any bottlenecks within the process. And bottlenecks are usually resource-derived. And by that, I mean human resource-derived. You'll immediately start to see that using traditional project planning, monitoring and control methods, the resource limitations also are a bone of contention within your project. So starting off at a fairly high level, step one would be to form your initial schedule within a Gantt chart, for example, as shown here, which leads to step two, including deriving what the critical path and critical chain actually are. 
Now, to work out the critical chain, you start with the critical path, then load the resources, then apply the critical chain method. That's saying it very simply, of course. And you'll recognize this as being a Gantt chart with resources assigned to each task or activity. In other words, at this juncture, the project is loaded with resources and you have a schedule in place. Step three is then to apply the critical chain method. And I'll explain that to you very shortly. What you'll discover is that a buffer is added at the end of the project. There's a buffer for any key milestones and key points that feed the critical path. So put at its simplest, critical chain is a resource leveled, buffered critical path schedule. Now, if you are fairly familiar with resource leveling, then you'll see that thus far, apart from the use of the word buffer, there isn't much different for you creating a Gantt chart with loaded and leveled resources. It's the buffering plus, as you'll learn, the estimating and the way in which they're scheduled, which makes this entirely different to what you may be familiar with. You'll know from your existing experience that resource constraints on the project can often change the critical path. However, using traditional approaches, such resource constraints aren't reflected in the use of the standard critical path. You would need to identify them behind, if you will, the resources, or use another view, such as a resource usage view. So what I'm describing here as a buffer, think of it as padding. It's a task, if you will, with a duration, but there are no resources loaded on it. So all you need to do to get the full picture of my Critical Chain Demystified video, hop on over to my website and sign up for the remaining modules of my Critical Chain Demystified. And here's the details I'll dive into critical chain advantages, the method, how to carry out critical chain estimating well beyond what you've already read, as late as possible scheduling, critical chain buffers, PERT estimates and project level PERT. It doesn't stop there. You'll also get to find out how to use several techniques for determining the buffer size. There's the cut and paste method, there's adaptive with density method, there's the root squared method and RSEM with PERT. You'll also learn how to calculate using the buffer size resource tightness method. But there's more. I'll take you into the detail of resource conflict resolution, the use of critical chain buffer size with the methodology PRINCE2, how to adapt, calculate and use the critical chain when using the Agile methodology on your projects, and once you've set it up, how to carry out critical chain monitoring control. I'll round the whole thing off by showing you how you can adapt and adopt Microsoft Project for use with Critical Chain. I have not seen all of this information anywhere, and here you'll get the whole thing onto one hour videos, complete with a downloadable PDF document with all of the diagrams and details. So rush on over to my website, and on the right hand side at the top, you'll see where you can sign up and invest in this powerful and useful Critical Chain Demystified video set. Thanks for your time and attention on this brief introduction video. I'm Dave Litton, and I look forward to your company again on the inside. Bye for now.